Armin Levac, ESPN Radio, 104.5 The Team. We are joined by the man in Giants land, Jordan Ronan of NJ.com. Follow him on Twitter, at Jordan Ronan. And uh, Jordan, first things first, your takeaway from the Giants 2015 NFL Draft. Well, they got two guys that are going to be basically penciled in as starters. Uh, first and second round, Landon Collins in the, in the second round, Eric Flowers in the first round. I'm a big fan of Eric Flowers. I personally think he was that he's the best lineman in this draft long term. I, I know there's some criticism about him. People think he's being overdrafted. This is a really, really good player. I'm a big fan of Eric Flowers, and uh, I don't think it was a reach at nine. So after that, you know, double O in round three, seems like good value. Obviously, hip injuries, you know, not the past year, but two hip surgeries the year before that. That is something that the other teams were worried about a little bit. The Giants cleared him physically. Fifth rounder, Mikhail Thompson, Michael Thompson. Uh, you got to question that one a little bit. Giants are the only one who had him visit. Maybe could have got him later in the sixth that they had contemplated taking in the fifth with Jeremy Davis at a UConn. And the seventh round is a high upside, young 20 year old offensive lineman. Pretty similar measurements to Eric Flowers. But, uh, you know. Need some work. Cross your fingers and hope something works out there with, with the Florida State kid, Bobby Hart. Seven, so. He's Jordan Rod out of NJ.com. Jordan, now uh, let's start with Flowers. Is, is he your starting right tackle? Does Pew move in? Yeah, you know, this is a tough one because you, you, they're really going to take a look at it and see how it kind of pans out. I think I don't think they're going to say 100% he's going to be the right tackle. Look, the, the, the personnel staff views him as a tackle. Uh, I mean, there's, there's uh, the obvious reasons, but he's 6'6". Six, six, has a, you know huge arms, real long reach. He's really long, but at the same time, his playing tackle in the NFL is a very difficult thing. Justin Pugh in his third year may be a better tackle than Eric Flowers in year one. That goes for pretty much any offensive line coming out of the draft. I mean, it's not like Justin Pugh is a guy who can't play in this league. He's proven he could play. I think it's something that is open to how things play out here. So uh, either way, you know. If Flowers plays inside a guard, outside a tackle, I do expect to start year one. He's Jordan Ron on NJ.com. Follow him on Twitter at Jordan Ron on. Uh, this is Armin Levac, ESPN Radio 104.5, the team. The second round, some people calling this one the steal of the draft. The Giants making the move, getting up, getting Landon Collins in the second. Is that the steal of the draft? You know, this was a necessity for them. They needed to get out of this draft with a, a safety that, you know, a bona fide starting safety. They really don't have one on their roster, a guy that you know and started safety in this thing. I mean, there's a bunch of question marks there. So they saw the opportunity. I think Mark Ross, the vice president of player evaluation, he's basically the draft boss. He saw uh, um, there. They, you know, they're drafting 40th in the, you know, overall. Uh, and Mark Ross was like, "Hey, we got to go get this guy." And then everybody else is on board, and uh, Jerry made it happen. They get the 33. So I think it's a very good pick. It's a guy they could pencil and say, "Hey, we now have a guy." A bona fide starting safety, which is something they couldn't say before. They didn't really like this. They didn't like this draft in regards to safety. So I'm not sure they thought they could get a guy in round two, three, or four. If his name was Landon Collins that could start this year. And uh, so they, they went and made the move. And uh, for them, it could be considered the steal of the draft because it's a guy that's going to be a big-time distributor ASAP. Now, the other safety, uh, Michael Thompson, there's reports that the Giants feel like they've got their safety tandem for the next however many years already. Is that just wishful thinking from what you're seeing, or do we wait and see? Yeah, I think that's just Tom Coughlin making a comment about how he liked his skill set to complement what Landon Collins' skill set, meaning that Thompson is a guy that they know as a deep center field type guy, that that's what they kind of project him at. But let's be honest, this is a guy who had one visit. To expect him, you know, right away or even in year one or maybe even in year two to come in and contribute and put next to Landon Collins seems like a stretch at this point. So uh, I think it's sort of wishful thinking, but, you know, it's the way the way the Giants look at it is their skill sets match up very nicely. you got one guy in the box type guy, a guy who can do it all, very physical, even maybe used in a linebacker type. Uh, position at times with Landon Collins, and then a guy like Thompson, who is a deep, rangy center field type, uh, not the biggest and best tackler, but sufficient enough where he could, you know, qualify as a safety. So put the two of them together, and uh, the Giants think they have a potential 
uh, secondary with the two of them back there. But we'll see. I think that's way off. With uh, it's almost like you're getting that whole Rex Ryan vibe because then you got uh, Owa Odikizua, and now he's being compared to Justin Talk. That it's pretty boisterous. It not not like Coughlin to be this boisterous. Yeah, I think that was kind of pushed upon them because out of the situation, the Talk happens to be drafted the same exact number pick in the same round, uh, number seventy overall. So. He didn't even realize that that was the same pick that they had taken Justin Tuck with. So this isn't something that they were thinking. This is something that, you know, when we got a hold of him like an hour or so later, that uh, they realized, hey, you know, that's, I guess, the comparison that they're going to hear about for years to come because it was the same number pick and he's the same style kind of player, which if you think about it, he is. The tough comparison, get used to it because it's going to hang around for a while. Jordan Ronan of NJ.com, is there a part of you like me who looks at the Giants and goes, really, can you just get one guy whose name is is easy to pronounce and normal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really funny because I was, uh, for that third round pick, uh, I was like telling somebody, you know, I, I, let me know when the, when the Giants select a guy. And he's like, all right, I just get the, uh, you know, the, the last name of the, of the guy. And I was like, well, let it not be Smith because I'll never know who the heck Smith is. You know, like, <laughs> so uh, you know. They, then when he spits it over, he's like, "Good luck spelling that." And I was like, "Oh boy, yeah." So uh, you know, with Oa and uh, Michael Thompson, with his, his name spelled interestingly, this was definitely an, an interesting group. Eric Flowers, and not your traditional Eric. So um, yeah, maybe that's the common theme here, I and mean, maybe that's how the Giants are drafting these days. <laughs> let's hope not let's hope not by the way i know because it just makes life so much i mean we've only got 140 characters on twitter and, and oh dicky zoo it takes up a lot of those <laughs> yeah definitely that's why i does you know i think one of the guys that either mark ross or uh terry reese as i said he's just gonna call him double o it's a lot easier that way i like that i like i'm gonna i'm stealing that uh jordan uh, ronan of nj.com double, o is, double o is definitely a lot easier than uh however you say his name Right, and if we and then we, I think we petitioned to get him just the number seven. And it's double oh seven, and it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, you know, maybe seventy seven is more reasonable because I don't know a defensive lineman in the NFL with a number seven. I don't think that flies. Like, I know they got but, rules on these things, you know. I know, important but there should things, be important things going on here. Well, there should be. There's times those rules should be broken, and when you get double oh seven on the end of the line, that's the time the rules should be broken. Yeah, they should. That's like that's worthy of a special petition to the league, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Just, just because it would be a cool nickname, I think I think the league would be very open to that. By the way, that's marketable right there. That's it. We just we just did their work for them. <laughs> it's true. If they can make money, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they go for it. Jordan Ronan of NJ.com. Now, Jordan, uh, the the news today, Odell Beckham Jr., one of the final four guys who have a chance of being the cover of Madden. Is anybody in the Giants Uh-oh. organization? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is any of them trying to, like, you know, submarine this thing on him so that he doesn't get the jinx? Yeah, you know, uh, maybe they think that Richard Sherman broke the curse last year. I don't know. Uh, it's possible. Uh, but, no. Uh, hey, it's an honor. He is. He shows that he's popular. It looks good for the organization. It means that he's uh, somebody that people want to want to see. People are very interested in, and uh, that's going in the right way for this organization to have a player like that. Because you know what? If you think about it, the Giants haven't had a player that has been on the cover before. The good part for Beckham is he would be the youngest guy, so he'd have he'd have a pretty good future ahead of him. You would think and plenty of years to prove that curse wrong if he did make it on the cover. It just makes me nervous. You go all the way back to, to Madden himself. He had that, that terrible athlete's foot for years with a tough act and tenac. And... <laughs> You're really going deep, okay, by the way. <laughs> You're pulling out athletes for, for John Madden. <laughs> this is what happens when Armin's away. I do what I want now. <laughs> We're talking about foot fungus. So, hey, Armin, how was your day? Oh, great. Hey, we talked about foot fungus. <laughs> All right, one more real football question, and then I will let I will let you go, and you won't have to worry about foot fungus the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> With this draft, who are a couple starters who should really be concerned about their position moving forward on the Giants? Yeah, I, I think you know, guy that they signed, the two guys that are kind of top down for me, and these aren't necessarily starters, but um, George Selby is the guy they signed this off season, right? He's basically signed as a run stuffing defensive end. Now that's a role that. Uh, you know, that's supposed to be the strength of double O. Uh, so I think that's one to keep an eye on, see what happens with Selvey moving forward. Uh, if Oa really proves in training camp that they could trust him and that they have to get him on the field, I think that, you know, they didn't commit a lot of money to Selvey. I think it was maybe $200,000 or something. That's an amount they probably could, uh, they could probably just eat and cut if necessary. Uh, another guy, Corey Washington, is going to have to prove a lot in 
this in this training camp this year to be able to stick around. I mean, that he'd improved the Giants last year. At least he didn't earn their trust for him to be a significant special teamer. So uh, that's something definitely to, to look look uh, to keep an eye on as we move forward here in training camp. He's Jordan Ronan, NJ.com. Great follow on Twitter at Jordan Ronan. Uh, Jordan, we covered everything from athlete's foot to 007. I think I don't think we can do any more. Yeah, I mean, tell Armin we got we covered it all today. You know, what I mean, there's there's nothing else to talk about this off season because we got it covered. No doubt. Done. I love it, <laughs> Jordan. Thank you for making some time, <laughs> and man. By the way, let me tell you, I feel yeah. bad. We're we're sending Armin to talk to these kids, and they're supposed to help them out. Yeah, he's doing like this guest speaker thing at Iona. I'm like, dude, what are you going to tell them that you know you ended up on a great signal, you've got a great co-host, you have a good Rolodex, <laughs> and that's it. Well, that's it. Well, I'm just scared for the kids that this is this is what they're you know that this is the advice that he's getting. You know, uh, I, I, it could be it could be on the dangerous side if you look at it. You should have seen him too. He was all corporate. He had the button down shirt, the the iron khakis. I was so proud of him. <laughs> Jordan, have a great day, man. Thank you so much. All right, guys. We have it. Have Talk a good to one you too. soon, man.